All right, so let's do neutron stars. Let's load this original one here. This is a little animation we created earlier. And again, go into the animated filters, filter, animation, neutrons. And so with the neutrons, we're going to render something a little bit different. Uh, particle count, we can have lots of them or just a few. And we can have the size of the particles change. Uh, are they all the same size? Right? Or is it randomly changing some to be bigger, some to be smaller? But you have a control over the biggest size here. Particle size, fixed size, all of them the same. There's a depth cue, so some of them appear darker as they move farther or closer to the camera. Uh, a bit of a simulation of depth that way. Uh, there's a, a gradient color too, so they can go and change color through a gradient. Right, so you have lots of gradients, and you could say, you know what, the star dark, they will start dark, and then they get bright, and then go dark again, and bright and dark, and perhaps also do that on the red, but then stay red, and then green will follow up later, you get the yellow, and blue will just come at the very end. So you get all sorts of funky stuff you can do with those. As you enable the gradient colors, it starts dark, and maybe we don't need the depth cue on top of that, but you see a lot of different effects coming from that. These are pretty dark here. Let's not do that. Let's go mostly brighter. Okay, value, something like this. Okay, or let's just not even use that. Yeah, this is pretty dark. Um, let's go and, okay, that's it. I had to disable it to re-enable it. Okay, so there's uh, some gradients. There's trails. One of my favorites is the motion trails. You see the trails, when they move fast in particular, you can make the trails longer. So you can see a nice little movement trail path there. Um, let's see what else could we want to possibly do. There is, a, again, um, similar to the other filter we saw earlier, there's a nova you can attach to that, uh, to these particles, a lens flares. Now, the preview here is not going to show it. So these features are enabled when you actually render. Right? You don't see them in the preview, unfortunately. But there is um, a lens flare you could add to that. Uh, let's do one, perhaps, without too much glow or side effect lens reflections. Um, let's do oh, this one actually might be interesting. Let's do that. Okay, uh, we'll have to enable that when we render it. So uh, spin up time in frames. There's a little bit of uh, movement from the initial acceleration when the particles are thrown into space there initially. You can give it some extra time before it actually starts rendering what's happening to their motion. Uh, and then there is also the minimal mass. Some of them have very little mass. So you could say they all have the same amount. They all attract the same amount. Or you can make them more massive. And they are responding more slowly to the others. Right? So they, they transform a little bit slower. But uh, So that's, that's the beauty of, beauty of it. There's a lot of different effects you can have with that. Uh, the trails. Let's go see the trails. Look at that. Okay, let's do that and go. So now remember we have the lens flares on that as well, and so you get, see a lot of glow, a lot of effects there. And once again, it's going to take a little while for my uh, poor old computer to render all that. Uh, so it might not actually show the update as it's going through that. But uh, once it's done, you'll have uh, the finished result, and there it is. All right, so that's one more thing that you could do. And again, it's not necessarily that you want to have it animated in the end, but you can get to it by animating it and then decide if this is the frame you want, or this one or this one. Because you might use this as uh, maybe a, f a fancy background for some sort of a game introduction or some titling of some sorts, right? I mean, then go to the text tool and, and, and put some sort of a, a title in front of it here. Um, I know this is uh, Howler 11, so we'll call it level 11. Um, let's see what's the, the size we want on that font. Perhaps a different um, a different font, maybe one with bold, italic, something like that. I don't like this font. This is not a nice font. Let's go change. Oh, that's better. But we do need to make this a little bit smaller. 
somehow it's jumping down to a really small size. Let's give it something like uh, 88. Nope, not my favorite font. Let's go to a different font. That's better. Okay, let's use this. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll keep it on uh, alpha. So we'll say uh, we'll render this as alpha, apply. So we have an alpha channel here that now is um, allowing us to perhaps erase to this background color. Um, what do we have in the swap? We have something like this that could be animated. Hey, it is still, it's coming from the animated swap. So that's cool. We can actually combine those two across the animation. Uh, let's go do that with the filter we saw earlier. Combiner swap, mix it through the through this alpha channel. All right, so we have essentially the sky coming from the swap, from the animated swap that we have over here, rendered into, um, blended in there through the selection mask. And the background is that animated set of particles. And then we can go and deselect that and you have a finished animation. And there you go. All right, so hopefully that will give you some ideas uh, about what you might want to do with uh, PD Howler. Even if you started with PD Artist, I think it's worth the upgrade. There's a lot of uh, new features and capabilities you might enjoy, even if at the end of the day, all you're doing is a single static image. Because now you have the ability to create something like this, even if you end up not using it in its animated form. But the reality is that you quite often will actually also need that animated version for something on the web or in a game or you know, videos, titling, whatnot. It looks so much cooler when it's actually animated. All right, thanks very much. Uh, see you next time.